In this video, we will understand that a client-server database system provides simultaneous access to the database for multiple clients, and we look at how concurrent access can be controlled to preserve the integrity of the database. Databases can hold vast amounts of information and often need to support multiple simultaneous users. Large databases such as those used by the NHS or police can have millions of records and thousands of active users. Users can be given different access rights to a database. Some will only be able to query the database and run reports. Others will be able to add and modify records. A select few may be allowed to delete records. All these different database queries result in multiple transactions taking place, often at the same time. It's vital that this process never causes a database to become inconsistent or corrupt. If transactions cause the database to become inconsistent, we can no longer guarantee its accuracy. No matter what type of transaction is taking place, the Database Management System, or DBMS for short, ensures that the data stored in the database remains consistent. So this brings us to something really important, data integrity. The process of maintaining the consistency of the database is known as data integrity. Being able to guarantee the integrity of the data held in a database is of vital importance. A key technique for ensuring data integrity in a relational database is known as referential integrity. Referential integrity refers to the accuracy and consistency of data within a relationship. So in this example, a bank is using a database to store the details of all its employees. The employee details table holds their name, among other things. A totally separate table called employee salary holds employees' salary information, among other things. Let's say we want to remove an employee from the database as have now left the bank. We would delete this record in the employee details table. Of course, they also exist in the employee salary table. We could manually remove them from this table too. However, this kind of procedure is prone to mistakes. The problem is made worse if references to the employee are held in several other tables. We risk being left with orphaned entries that relate to an employee who no longer exists, and thus we end up with inconsistent data. One way to maintain referential integrity would be to enforce a cascade delete restraint on the primary key relationship between the tables. Now, if we delete an employee record from the employee details table, any associated rows from the employee salary table will also be deleted. Referential integrity enforces this process and helps to ensure the integrity of our database. In a similar way, referential integrity can be implemented to prevent us from adding a record to the employee salary table if there isn't a matching employee for it to link to in the employee details table. Although referential integrity restraints like cascade delete can help us maintain data integrity, they must be used with caution. If we had a cascade delete restraint on the primary key relationship between the tutor group and student tables, what could potentially happen? Well, say we delete the record 10E from the tutor group table. The deletion would cascade back down and delete all records of students in 10E from the student table too. Is this what we wanted to achieve? What if we were just merging tutor groups? Just because we wanted to delete the tutor group 10E doesn't necessarily mean all the students have left the school. Next, we're going to look at transaction processing. This is any information processing that is divided into individual, indivisible operations called transactions. Each transaction must succeed or fail as a complete unit. It can never be only partially complete. 
when we have concurrent database access, there is potential for updates being lost if two clients edit a record at the same time. This problem can be managed using various methods, including record locking, serialization, timestamp ordering, and commitment ordering. So let's look at those. With record locking, this prevents multiple transactions from accessing the same data concurrently, so at the same time. When a record is locked, only the transaction that holds the lock can read or modify the record, preventing update conflicts. Serialization. This ensures the transactions are executed in a sequential manner, one after the other. This method schedules transactions in sequence like a queue to avoid the possibility of conflicting access. Timestamp ordering uses timestamps to resolve conflicts by assigning a unique timestamp to each transaction. Transactions are then processed in timestamp order, ensuring older transactions are dealt with before newer ones. And finally, commitment ordering, a technique that orders transactions based on the time they commit rather than when they start. This helps optimize the concurrency level and maintain the consistency of the database. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What do we mean by the term referential integrity? And what are the primary considerations regarding transaction processing? So that's all you need to know for the exam. But if you want to know a little bit more on this interesting topic, put your pen down and carry on listening. So to ensure data integrity, transaction processing in all database management systems must conform to a set of rules. These rules are referred to by the acronym ACID. Atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. These four rules describe the properties required by all database transactions. So what do they mean? Well, atomicity. This means a change to a database is either completely performed or not at all. A half completed change must never be saved to the database. The word atomicity comes from the word atom. It refers to the fact that we once thought the atom was the smallest particle and the singular building block of all other matter. There was no concept of having half an atom. Likewise, there should be no possibility of having a partially performed database transaction. Consistency. Any change in the database must retain the overall state of the database. A good example of this is transferring of funds from one bank account to another. For example, when you pay for something online, money debited from one account must be balanced by the money being credited in another. If this was not the case, then digitally speaking, money could just vanish. Isolation. A transaction must not be interrupted by another transaction. The transaction must occur in isolation so other users or processes cannot access the data concerned. In practical terms, a database enforces isolation by implementing a system of record locking. The record or records being affected by the transaction are locked, effectively placing them in a read-only state. Only when the transaction is fully completed will the lock be removed. And durability. Once a change has been made to a database, it must not be lost due to a system failure. In real terms, durability is achieved by making sure the DBMS writes the effects of transactions immediately back to permanent secondary storage, rather than simply holding those changes in any form of temporary volatile storage, such as main memory.